What's up guys, so today is our first nucleic acids lecture. And so we're gonna start by defining what a nucleic acid is. So the term nucleic acid comes from nucleic because these are mostly found in the nucleus, and acid because the phosphate backbone in these nucleic acids are, as you might guess, acidic. So what I want you guys to know from nucleic acids is that they are macromolecules, and they are the macromolecules that contain the genetic information for all known forms of life. And so this is going to include both ribonucleic acids, or RNA, and deoxyribonucleic acids, or DNA. So as always, we're going to learn to talk about nucleic acids using polymer notation. So the individual monomer building blocks for nucleic acids are nucleotides. If we have two nucleotides covalently linked together, this is going to form a dinucleotide. And now I want you to go ahead and pause the video and see if you can tell me what we would call two to 10 nucleotides connected covalently and more than 10 nucleotides connected covalently. So that's correct. Two to 10 nucleotides would be an oligonucleotide and more than 10 nucleotides would form a polynucleotide. Okay, so what are nucleotides from a structural standpoint? So each nucleotide has three components. We have a nitrogenous base, a sugar, and a phosphate. And there's five different nitrogenous bases that make up nucleotides. We have adenine, guanine, and cytosine, which are found in both RNA and DNA, thymine, which is found only in DNA, and uracil, which is found only in RNA. And there's two sugars. We have ribose and deoxyribose. So this is where the names ribonucleic acid and deoxyribonucleic acid comes from. So RNA only contains ribose and DNA only contains deoxyribose. And then whether we're talking about RNA or DNA, we're still going to have the same phosphate group. So our five nitrogenous bases are all derivatives of two organic aromatic amines. So we have purine on the left, which has a nine-membered ring, and we have pyrimidine on the right, which has a six-membered ring. Okay, so now we're gonna go over each of the five nitrogenous bases, and here's what I want you to know. I want you to be able to recognize them. You don't have to memorize their structure. On the exam, I'm going to give you all five structures, and you need to be able to label them with their names. You need to know which bases are found in RNA, which are found in DNA, and which are found in both. And you need to know how many hydrogen bonds they make when they base pair. And that's going to make a lot more sense to you when we get into the secondary structure of nucleic acids. So adenine, which has the one letter code A, and guanine, which has the one letter code G, are our purines. And being from Texas, with a genetics professor that graduated from Texas A&M, the way I was taught to remember this was that ags are pure. And so that leaves cytosine, thymine, and uracil. So cytosine has the one letter code C, thymine has the one letter code T, and uracil has the one letter code U. So much easier than amino acids, the one letter code for all five bases is just the first letter in their name. So these last three, cytosine, thymine, and uracil, these are our pyrimidines. So they're all based on the six-membered ring structure. And our two sugars are two that we saw when we did the carbohydrates module. We have ribose and deoxyribose, so more specifically, they exist as beta-D-ribofuranose and beta-D2-deoxyribofuranose. So these are the only correct forms for these sugars when we're talking about nucleic acids. When they're forming a nucleic acid, they're always going to be in the beta anomer, the D enantiomer, and in the furanose cyclic structure. Okay, so let's summarize the differences between RNA and DNA that are important for this class. So DNA is going to be formed from a deoxyribose sugar. It's going to contain the bases adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. And it's generally going to be found double-stranded. Conversely, RNA is going to contain a ribose sugar. It's going to contain adenine, uracil, guanine, and cytosine as the bases. And it's generally going to be found single-stranded. So another name for a nucleotide is a nucleoside monophosphate. So that means a nucleoside is going to be just the base and the sugar. So when we have a base 
and a sugar connected like we have in these two pictures, that is a nucleoside. And they're always going to be connected by what we call a beta N glycosidic bond. So remember from our carbohydrates module that glycosidic bonds are acetal linkages. So we're forming an acetal between a hemiacetal, like a cyclic monosaccharide, and an alcohol. So an N-glycoside is very similar. It's going to be a hemiacetal, like from a cyclic monosaccharide, but this time we're going to add it to an amine. And the amine is going to come from our nitrogenous base. So we see very specific N-glycosidic bonds form when we're connecting a sugar to a nitrogenous base. We're not going to see near as many varieties as we saw connecting disaccharides together. So for nucleosides, the N-glycosidic bond is always going to be from the one prime carbon on the sugar to nitrogen one on pyrimidines or nitrogen nine on a purine. Okay, so what is this one prime thing? So for nucleosides, since we have two separate cyclic residues attached together, we're going to want to number both of them, but we don't want to get our numbers confused. So for a nucleoside or a nucleotide, when we number the sugar ring, we're going to add a prime to each of the numbers. So go ahead and pause this video and see if you can number the deoxyribose residue on the deoxycytidine molecule at the top. Okay, let's see what you came up with. Okay, so our anomeric carbon is going to be one prime, two prime, three prime, four prime, and then the carbon attached to our primary alcohol will be five prime. And for completeness, I'll go ahead and number our cytosine residue as well. Okay, so how do we name nucleosides? So unfortunately, there's no easy way where I can say drop the last three letters and add this. You kind of just have to memorize this table right here. So if our base is adenine, we're going to use adenosine as our nucleoside name. If our base is cytosine, we're going to use cytidine as our nucleoside name. For guanine, our nucleoside name will be guanosine. For thymine, our nucleoside name will be thymidine. And for uracil, our nucleoside name will be uridine. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is identify whether our nucleoside would be found in RNA or DNA. So if it's got a ribose sugar, then our name is good. We don't need to add anything. If it's a deoxyribose sugar, then we're just going to add deoxy to the front of the nucleoside name. So for example, look at the two structures on this screen. So this molecule at the top, which has a uracil base and a ribose sugar, would just be uridine. This molecule at the bottom, which has a guanine base and a deoxyribose sugar, we can't just call it guanosine, we have to call it deoxyguanosine so that we know that it contains a deoxyribose sugar. So luckily, once you get that down, it's really easy to name nucleotides. To name a nucleotide, all we're going to do is add the nucleoside name first, then we're going to add the position of the phosphate attachment, followed by monophosphate, diphosphate, or triphosphate, depending on how many phosphate residues we have. So let's try an example. So go ahead and pause this video and see if you can come up with a name for the nucleotide on this screen. Okay, so let's see how you did. So the first thing I'm going to do is answer these questions. So which sugar do we have? So we're missing our hydroxy group at position two. So this is a deoxyribose. And looking at the structures on the previous slides, this looks like a guanine base. And it looks like we have a single phosphate that's attached to the sugar at the five prime position. Okay, so let's put it all together. So the first thing, what is our nucleoside name? So a guanine base plus a deoxyribose sugar would be deoxyguanosine. Next, we need the connection between our sugar and our phosphate, and that connection is five prime, and we only have a single phosphate, so this would be a monophosphate. So that means the final name of this molecule would be deoxyguanosine 5 prime monophosphate. And oftentimes you'll see nucleotides abbreviated, so we can abbreviate this nucleotide as DGMP. A lowercase d for deoxy, g for guanosine, m for mono, and p for phosphate.
Okay, let's try a couple more. So go ahead and pause your video and see if you can name the two nucleotides on this screen. Okay, let's start with the one at the top right, and we're going to answer the same questions we answered for the previous example. So what type of base do we have? So looking back at our previous slides, this looks like a uracil, and it looks like we definitely have our oxygen attached to our two prime carbon, so this would be a ribose sugar, and we have a single phosphate attached at the two prime position. So our nucleoside name, a nucleoside made from uracil and ribose, would be uridine. Our phosphate is attached at the two prime position of our ribose, and we have a single phosphate group. So that means the final name for this nucleotide would be uridine two prime monophosphate. Okay, what about the bottom one here? So our nitrogenous base looks very similar to the one in the previous one, except it has a methyl group at position five, which makes this a thymine. Our sugar is missing the hydroxy group at position two, so this is a deoxyribose. And we have a single phosphate group attached at the three prime position. Okay, so a nucleoside made up of thymine and deoxyribose would be deoxythymidine. And we have a single phosphate group attached at the three prime position. So that means the name of this nucleotide is deoxythymidine three prime monophosphate. So another acceptable name for this nucleotide would be thymidine three prime monophosphate. So why is that acceptable? Why can we drop the deoxy from this nucleotide name? Well, it's because thymine is only found in DNA, so we know that the sugar has to be a deoxyribose, so we don't have to add the deoxy prefix here. A lot of times you'll just see this written as thymidine three prime monophosphate. But for this class, either of those answers are fine with me. Okay, let's try another example. So go ahead and pause this video and see if you can come up with a name for the nucleotide on this screen. Okay, so it looks like we have a thymine base again. And since thymine is only found in DNA, it's not surprising that we have a deoxyribose sugar as well. But this time we have two phosphate groups with one of them attached at the five prime position. So putting this all together, our nucleoside name would be deoxythymidine or just thymidine, since we know that thymine only exists in DNA, our phosphate groups are attached at the five prime position, and this time we have two of them, so it'll be diphosphate. So this molecule would be thymidine five prime diphosphate or deoxythymidine five prime diphosphate. So what type of linkages do we have here? So let's introduce a couple of new functional groups. So hopefully at this point in the class, you remember that an ester is a carbonyl attached to an oxygen. So what do you think we would call a functional group that looks similar to an ester, but we replace the carbon with a phosphorus? So we would call that group a phosphoester or a phosphate monoester. So what if we added another oxygen, another single bonded oxygen attached to our phosphorus? So instead of having an ester bond going in just the right direction, we have an ester bond going in the left direction as well. So what do you think we would call this functional group? That's right, it would be a phosphodiester or a phosphate diester linkage. Okay, so what if we expand this functional group again? What if we add in another phosphorus double bonded to an oxygen? So a structure we might see if we have a diphosphate or triphosphate group attached to a nucleoside. So what we've created here is what would be called a phosphoanhydride bond. And so this phosphoanhydride bond right here is going to be very important when we get to the metabolism module. But to wrap things up today, here's a little preview of metabolism. So go ahead and pause this video and see if you can name the nucleotide on this screen. Okay, so it looks like we have an adenine base and a ribose sugar, and this time we have three phosphates attached at the five prime position. So a nucleoside formed from adenine and ribose would be adenosine, our phosphates attached at the five prime carbon. 
and we have three phosphates. So this molecule would be adenosine 5 prime triphosphate. But you probably know it better as ATP. So you may have heard ATP referred to as the energy currency for the cell. And oftentimes you hear these phosphoanhydride bonds being referred to as high energy bonds. So what does that mean? Well, it means that hydrolysis reactions, where we remove a phosphate group from ATP to form ADP, adenosine 5 prime diphosphate, are highly favorable reactions. They have a large negative delta G. And we can use that large negative delta G and couple the hydrolysis of ATP with other reactions that aren't favorable. So this gives us a way to power all of these non-spontaneous, these unfavorable reactions in our body. But I don't want you to bog yourself down too much with that right now. For now, let's just focus on nucleic acids. But that's going to be a major topic in Module 8 Metabolism.